In this ENG 1101 assignment, we will be discussing the events and ethical decision making of the Ford Pinto case study involving fuel tank fires, recall, and litigation. Listing the key events regarding this case, in 1968, the Federal Motor Safety Vehicle Standard for Fuel System Integrity only specified that passenger cars meet a 30 miles per hour barrier crash. In 1971, Ford released their first Ford Pinto, and this carried on until 1976, fully knowing that there was a design issue with the fuel tank and its flammability in low-speed car collisions. In 1972, the first case for the Ford Motor Company was against Richard Grimshaw, who was a 13-year-old boy who survived as a passenger with major burns due to his mother's 1971 Pinto catching fire after another car hit its rear at 28 miles per hour. In 1977, a petition was made by the Center of Auto Safety to the NHTSA based on three deaths and four serious condition injuries to recall Ford Pintos. During this time, Mark Dowie also released an article exposing Ford's cost and benefit analysis of choosing to ignore fuel tank issues and favoring to pay for injury liabilities, even after obtaining a patent for better fuel tank designs. After this article was released, the auto safety case was reopened, and crash tests were conducted by the NHTSA, which found significant fuel tank damages and leaks in 1971 to 1976 Pintos. Following these findings, the Federal Motor Safety Vehicle Standard for Fuel System Integrity was revised, stating that all passenger cars, including the Pinto, needed to meet a 30 miles per hour rear and side moving barrier. The Indiana case happened in 1978, where Ford was charged with negligence for the deaths of three women in a 1973 Pinto, but was later found innocent because the Pinto was not more dangerous than any other of its competitors at the time. After a lot of media attention was gained for the Ford Pinto, Ford agreed to recall 1.5 million of their 1971 to 1976 Pintos to quote-unquote end public concern that had resulted from criticism of the fuel systems in these vehicles. Ford never fully admitted that there were issues with the Ford Pinto and its fuel tank designs. The actions made by Ford showcase their negligence of safety for their consumers and highlight the fact that large companies are never truly held accountable for their unethical decision making. The ethical issues associated with this case are as follows. 1. The decision to continue with the sales of a product that endangers a consumer's life over redesigning the fuel tank of every car produced and spending more money. 2. The unclear and vague safety standards causing loopholes and confusion regarding safety regulations. If the safety standards specified rear and side collisions in the first place, the Ford Pinto would have never passed the standard. Three. Choosing to speed up this process of releasing an unsafe car to maintain dominance and compete with uprising foreign companies. At the time, Japanese cars were more intriguing to consumers, so Ford needed to double their brand. The actor chosen for this case was the Ford Motor Company. This is because, even after they established flaws through the crash test, the engineers and the company still commenced the production. What influenced their actions was the fact that the car met safety standards in 1967. There was no side or rear regulations, but only a front barrier regulation that required to sustain a 30 mile per hour crash. They also had a second design, but proceeded with the original tank design for financial safety reasons. The ethical decision made by Ford. Ford had two options, one that favored them and one that worked against them. The first option was to replace all tanks, costing about $17 million. The second option that favors them is to pay for all tank-related accidents. They chose a utilitarianism approach. As they realized the chances for an accident were average, they concluded that there would be a less impact on the customers compared on the company. Because recalling all the cars and repairing them would be costly and negatively affect the company, Ford established not recalling the Pintos would benefit them in their perspective. What are the ethical responsibilities that Ford has to fulfill? Well, there are two. The first one being to produce quality cars to uphold the company name and keep up with the rise of foreign competitors. The second one being to produce cars that are safe and meet all federal motor safety vehicle standards for the fuel system integrity standards and not value saving money over their lives. Now I'll discuss ethical alternatives that Ford could have taken. Using duty ethics, Ford should have redesigned the product to risk losing to foreign companies. This ensures the safety of their consumers, which we believe is the most important. The Ford engineer should have tested their patented fuel tank alternative options during the crash testing. 
the Ford engineer should have been more transparent with the rest of the company. The company should have paid more to improve the fuel systems in the car, and they should have spent more money to maintain brand name quality. During this ethical issue, Ford decided to choose the unethical choice of favoring saving money in, over their consumers' lives and selling them dangerous cars with defects in their fuel tanks. This tarnished the Ford name and they lost consumer trust due to the situation's exposure to the media. What they should have done during this time was spend more money to maintain their brand name quality. Duty ethics justifies this case because it is Ford's responsibility to produce cars that are safe for consumers. Being more cautious about the design of their fuel tanks to meet all the safety guidelines and to not look for loopholes in law to justify faults in the design would save companies money and the lives of individuals using their product. As future engineers, we need to hold bigger companies accountable for their ethical issues and faults so that we can make ethical decisions in day-to-day -day practices.